What's up everybody, it's Jay Brown, Weekend Hooker. Getting ready to do a quick little video about the 2400 Eastward that I've had since July of 2021. Got about 250 hours <clears throat> on each motor. Just wanna run through the boat again, tell you what I like, what I dislike. So the new 2400 Eastwards come with a different top cap than, than this. This is the flat cap. And this is a tall boat, it's a deep boat. And what I mean by deep is when you're standing here and that's above my knee, probably three inches above my knee, when you reach down to the water, I mean, you can't tell it here, but she's deep. She's already up off of the water a good ways. And that new top cap, I like it. It looks good, but it just creates a lot more height than, and I don't need the height. So anyway, the fish box, this John Ormus fish box, 99.9% .9 of the time, this is an amazing rod locker storage for traveling up and down the road. And it's just great for storage in general. So on a lake day, we're up here at Bugs Island today. And for a lake day, I mean, you can put everything that you could possibly imagine. And if you had a tube or <clears throat> some inflatable, you could just throw it in there, deflate it, obviously throw it in there. Port and starboard storage compartments, anchor locker. I got my reef anchor in there right now. Of course, I've got the fluke out here hanging the front, and I've got a standard 25 pound river anchor just keeping the back in position so we don't swing too far. All right, um, everything up here, love it. I mean, there's nothing I would change, and I would not go with the, the higher top cap. This the, uh, it's made of Kusa, right? All of these are custom built boats. And so this is made of Kusa. <clears throat> Insulative properties. Well, I keep a fish bag, as you can see there. Keep a fish bag in here and I'll fill that with ice and keep it out of the sun to put, you know, anything additional that uh, we catch that doesn't fit in the monster fish bag that I hang on the transom. So I'm gonna close these real quick. Let you get an idea of what we're going with. All right. Center console, hatch, ice box. <clears throat> Good storage. Not that great of an ice box, but once again, I put a, a cooler down in it and uh, use it just for general storage. This is the large center console. So, it's got a lot more headroom than I'm gonna say your headroom starts here. And for me, it probably comes up to midway up my chest or not chest, my stomach. Anyway, just commercial grade, right? Now they, they did do a good job on the wiring. I've got the two cranking batteries in here and I've got two house batteries. And those ACR chargers are connected one to each motor. And so as I alternate my motors while I'm trolling offshore, I'll just alternate my switch here. Battery switch here. So if I'm on the left motor, I'm one. Port motor one, starboard motor two. And of course, this is just your engine switch. ACR, always got to have one of those if you're running offshore. So captain's chairs that's the only upholstery on the boat outside of the yeti cooler tops love that do not like a bunch of upholstery i got a very simple layout here simrad seven inch is connected to the mercury's does exactly what it needs to do i got the 10 inch touch screen here i was going to put a hummingbird a large hummingbird graph here and i still might because if if, if i put a trolling motor one of the the new i think minkota i don't know the name of it but if I put that on the boat, then that's probably what I'll go with, just for simple ease of use, deploy everything else in the side imaging for fresh water. So the dash, um, very simple, Richie Compass. Put that on. I mean, you gotta have a compass, but I didn't want a big monster one sitting up top here because I want to be able to utilize this space. And that does absolutely everything that you need it to do. Simple dash layout, once again, 
the Mercury throttle controls. Love, love how you can go to a single engine application or a single engine control where you just put the same, push one lever and then this one can be forward and then you're actually using this to control the boat. But whenever you're in close to the dock, I pull them back, take it out of the single lever and then I can spin the boat, put that one in reverse, this one in forward and the boat's just gonna spin on a dime. It's beautiful. You don't need skyhook or anything like that, any kind of dock helm master with a catamaran. But anyway, large console. I got the standard T-top. Um, it has served its purpose. Should have got outriggers up here, but I had some outriggers off of the Albemarle, and I put them right here in the gun album. Uh, outriggers, it works perfect. The structure here on the front, you just you look through it, it doesn't even really bother you. I do like the fact that we have an open air here, so it keeps some breeze blowing on you. Grab handles, like I say, captain's chair is very simple. These are not high end, they're comfortable. When I'm running offshore, I pull this down, put the seat down, the bolster, and then I literally sit here and steer with my feet as I'm running offshore. The boat tracks ridiculously well. It is absolutely the best hull that I have tested from a catamaran perspective that tracks straight and there is absolutely no bow steer whenever you are in a trailing sea. Don't care how big the sea is and I have run them all and I can promise you there's some big, 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 big boats that have horrible bow steer on a trailing sea. The only thing that I wouldn't do, I would not put this here. I would not put the bait well there, hardly ever use it. I would move the bait well here or do like the 30s with the top cap and put smaller bait wells here and here because I still want my transom door. This is a beautiful thing. Um, love being able just to walk out, get onto the platform. This is the Armstrong bracket. Love that. Got a bunch of rod holders on the boat. You can count them. Ding, 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 ding. There we go. Uh, a bunch of them right there. All right. So the Mercs, uh, got nothing but good things to say about the Mercury Motors. Mercury Motors have been wonderful. They have uh, not let me down, not had any issues. And folks, I'm getting ready to climb in the water so I can give you an in-the-water review of this Eastward 2400. This is dangerous. Don't do this at home, children. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so, you can see how she floats from a side profile. This is a big... 24 foot hole people I know a lot of people is gonna argue oh, it's only 24 feet well that's a running surface bracket it's three foot bracket full running surface surface it is no different than your Euro transom 27 foot catamaran don't care what you say it's not even up for debate this thing runs out 47 48 mile an hour at about 5600 rpm it's the 200 v6 so they're limited in rpm Right, the 225 V6s, all they do is just let it spin up a little bit more. With just under 100 gallons of fuel right now, coming out here to this spot with the family, light load. 2.4 to 2.6 at uh, 3,900 RPM, just right at 30 miles per hour. Trim set at uh, 30 degrees of angle, because these motors, when they're sitting fully trimmed down they sit like this okay so whenever you're digging this thing out of the hole it, it, it there's no bow rise I mean this sucker just flat it just well probably about that is where these motors like to run these are not long shaft motors they run out extremely well I am sitting on a rock and about to bust my tail all right here we go So one of the things about a catamaran is obviously you got tunnel height. And I know it's a lot up to debate, but I've run a bunch of boats and a flat tunnel is gonna do nothing but slap. It is essentially an elevated skiff is all it is. If you rode in a skiff, that pounding of your teeth every time the water slaps is exactly what happens. And so I would say like the 24, I think it's a 24 foot twin V, with the flat bottom just idling into a one foot little chop that thing sits there and tunnel slaps ridiculously bad all catamarans tunnel slap don't care but the taller the tunnel the less likely it's that it's going to do it and the key about a catamaran is you need to angle 
you need to go at an angle into the wave sets while trolling and that's going to reduce any tunnel slap so folks 10 minute video it's probably long enough let's see what haven't i what haven't i discussed little armstrong swim ladder here like that really love the boat we we don't get to use it as much um i thought about selling it put it up for sale had quite a few people interested in it but a lot of people out of florida didn't want to come to north carolina to see the boat don't know if we'll sell it but if i do more than likely i would say in probably two to three years there'll be a another eastward sitting at the house down at the coast that we're we're trying to buy so anyway if you got any questions you got any comments you'd like to know anything about the boat let me know um it is a battle wagon no they are not the prettiest you know catamarans on the market but they are built like a tank they ride amazing and if you haven't if you haven't run one go run every other catamaran that you could possibly even think about buying or, or afford and uh save yourself a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars go run it eastward and i promise you if you're not worried about all the the niceties you will end up buying one because it rides as good or better than anything else out there all right this is jb weekend hooker if you got any questions let me know comments down in the comment section peace out